Have you ever wanted to get your pupils drawing? At Lauriston School in the East End of London, they believe that whole school art projects are the best way to stimulate enthusiasm and creativity. This year the subject is portraits, and the teachers have discussed in depth how each of the eight-year groups will develop this theme. Art is seen as a fundamentally important subject at Lauriston School, and the whole school project will be developed in other subjects such as drama and creative writing. But, says Deputy Head and Art Coordinator Peter Sanders, it all begins with observation and drawing. I dug a sketch to give me some ideas. I'm going to be doing a year two lesson this morning, concentrating on drawing, and they're doing their self-portrait. We've started the term by doing some preparation work, finding out how the tools work and so on. And at the moment, I'm getting the classroom ready for them coming in. The first point I'd like to make is how essential thorough preparation is for successful outcomes. The right equipment for the job is really important. If you can put the name of each kid... I've prepared their drawing boards for them in advance so that there isn't any of that time wasted in getting ready. And on them they've got cartridge paper, which is really good quality. We've often been given stuff from the scrap project which is shiny and impossible to draw on. Actually, that's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> Who's that? We've got dozens of extra pencils so that when a child's pencil blunts, we just give them another pencil. We've spent quite a lot of time talking about what a drawing pencil is, how it's different from a writing pencil, and we'll go over that again in the lesson. So, so I reckon if we move them do, 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 like that, that way. Right. do you reckon? Yes. Because that way you'd have light coming in from the side then, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I've rearranged the room for something like this, I think working on their own, or as near on their own as possible, is really helpful. In the past, we've had trouble with mirrors that you can't see in, so I've started out by getting as many really good mirrors as possible. When the children come in, I intend to be completely ready. I'll do my introduction, and we'll go straight into the drawing activity itself. Today, we're going to be doing some drawing. What was the last thing we did in drawing? Can you remember? Um, other people. Other people. When we were drawing other people, <coughs> we called it something. Can you remember what we called it? Self-portrait. <laughs> ah, self-portraits. Well, when you draw other people, you call it a portrait. But Noah, he said a self-portrait. <gasps> and that's when you draw a picture of yourself. And if you look around the room, there are mirrors. These mirrors are going to become the only thing we look at, <coughs> apart from the paper that we draw on. Now, when we first started drawing this term, we started making marks, didn't we? Do you remember the marks we made? Is there anybody in this room who can think of one sort of mark that we made and would like to come and try it on the board? Beautiful. Some light lines there. Look at those squiggly lines. It's a bit like having a dictionary, and we can look up words in a dictionary, but on our piece of paper, we can look up lines. Look at that, how gently she did that. Could you do some tones, do you think, with a pencil? Let's have a look. I think you're right. I think that is tone. Can you remember what we used tone for? That and dark to light. Dark to light. Look at that. That is fantastic. Thank you, Philip. I've given Lara a different pencil, and let's see what happens. Six B. It's a it feels six B. Really soft. Did you hear that? It feels really soft. A six B feels like you're drawing with butter. <coughs> really soft. Well, not quite butter. <laughs> We're just going to have a look at some pictures that other people have done, and the different marks they've made. I'm using some artwork that's been done by other people. The examples I've got are all very different. Some of them are really scratchy and quite odd to look at. And I think it's quite good for children to see that the bizarre is acceptable and it's acceptable in the adult world as well as with children. So if they don't think they're quite up to it, they can see the work that other people have done and say, well, I can do the same. Where's the zigzag lines? Well, I can see some. Yeah. yeah? Look, zigzag lines that have been used. It looks like you can see the cloth there. 
Drawing is all about looking. That's all it's about, looking and thinking. And when I did the register, I sent two people out. But I didn't tell you who they were. Stephen, can you tell me one of the people who went out? Whenever we do a drawing exercise which involves looking... Isabella. Isabella. I like to play a game where I send one child or perhaps two children out of the room without having told anyone else I'm going to do it. How long is her hair, Stephen? And then I ask the other children questions about them. What were they wearing? What is their hair like? How long is it? And so on. And this is to reinforce the need to look and how in our normal lives we actually don't look very much at all. Show me how far it would come down. <coughs> to there, to down. It works very well as a focusing exercise to enforce looking. What kind of jumper is Jake wearing today? Mm. Shall we see them? Although children are brilliant at it, they often miss key factors. I bet you thought we'd have you. Yeah. And we had. <laughs> when you're drawing, I don't want anyone to do this. There's the mirror, there's the drawing. If I see this, I'll know you're not doing a proper drawing. If I see you going like this, What's the problem? I'm not looking at me. So I, I don't know what I look like. You've got to look at the mirror. And light. Whoops, let's put that up there. George, come here and say that again. Because he must have looked very carefully. Say it again. I'm on top of my hair, so I'm dark. And George is wondering why. Anyone think they know? Jack. Because all of the hair's there. All of the hair's there. There's much more hair at the top, isn't there? Perhaps you can only see bits. Maybe you better look at your own hair and see if your hair's like that. Right. One of our rules when we're drawing ourselves is not a sound. Think about where you're going to start your drawing. Is it going to start on the nose? Is it going to start with the hair? Is it going to start with the shape of the whole face, very, very gently. Whatever it starts with, we're going to use up the whole space of this paper. Keep looking at the marks you've made. Are they squiggly? Are you using tone like Rosa showed us? I think the mouth's too high, isn't it? But let's leave it there. Let's think about where that is. Declan's really thought about the kind of marks he's going to make for his hair. Come down this far. Have a look. Comes down much further, doesn't it? You do that. Whoosh. Look at your eye. Is your eye round? Is it round? The eyeball is, but what about what's round the eye? Have a look around where the eyeball is. Yeah. yeah. Listen, darling, don't keep getting on. It was interesting that some children were quite regularly out of their seats wanting affirmation of the work that they'd done. Where do you think it should be? Where do you think it ought to be? Do you know, I think you're absolutely right. We have rubbers that we carry around with us. I don't hold with the notion of not rubbing out. I think if they want to get rid of it, it's not what they want. And they know it's not what they want. We get rid of it. That got a little bit too dark, did it? Maybe we needed another pencil. Why didn't you put your glasses in your picture, Cardinal? If you do it really fast, you won't have a very good face. You could do dots if you have freckles. If you do it wrong, you can just get rubber and rub it out. My hair's going to be easy because it's curly. If it's a really soft pencil, if you use it really hard, the point will break. Do you know, everybody is really looking incredibly carefully. Would you two like to stand up and show your work around? And while they're showing it, you have a look at what you've drawn. <laughs> And think to yourself, what else can I do? You've got five more minutes. So let's have a long look. Right, this is beautiful. Do you know what we're talking about? Shading, about tone. It's very, very dark here, isn't it? Around the eyes. The eyes are bright. 
But actually around the eyes is not bright, it's dark, isn't it? Your skin is darker than my skin. I wonder if you could have a look at what Noah's doing there. Can you see the tone he's putting on there? If I look at this side of your skin, it's much darker than this side because the sun is on this side and the shade is on this side. So go and have a long look at yourself and have that shade. I have the last neck. You certainly are. Yeah, Phoebe's just asked a really important question. She's just said, are you allowed to do necks? If you can see your neck in the mirror, do it. Because they're part of you, aren't they? Yeah, so go and do them, Phoebe, that's great. Yeah, shadow, Declan's doing some shadow here, fantastic. And put your pencils down. And put your hands on your head. I was really pleased with the way the, the lesson went today. I think the children worked extremely well, especially considering that they're only three weeks into being year two children, so they're, they're still very young. They drew for about an hour, which I think is extraordinary for such young children. And I was worried that they wouldn't spend that long drawing and that I couldn't ask them to. And I think they picked up what the whole idea of the lesson was. We were talking about tone, we were talking about line, we were talking about looking, and they really, really got everything that, they, that we talked about at the beginning of the lesson. to go up and to tell us why you like a particular picture. And the first person I'd like to go up is <coughs> Pearls. That one. Why do you like that one? The hair looks like he's one and the glasses. And I can tell the drawing. Fantastic, thank you, George, that's great. Wow. I like it because, um, <coughs> The way she done the dress, she looked really closely. What about the face? It's got some dark bits and some light bits. I like this because Jack really looked at him and he done um, some shading down there. And he really looked a lot. I like this one because um, Rosa really looked at her hair and her plaits that go like that. I like this one because it's got a lot of shading on the hair and on the face and it's got a really dark bit for its mouth. What have you learned that's made you a better drawer, do you think? I looked at the light bits then I looked at the dark bits. If you look carefully and do some detail and do the colour of your skin, you can do a very good drawing. Use the pencil soft and squiggly. I think drawing's good because it's, it's really fun. I'm encouraged and I think we'll do loads more work on drawing before we move on to anything else. Don't rush, really look closely. 